Well, hey, and welcome to another edition of Speaking Of. Today we're going to talk about, well, we started with, we're going to talk about capture, but really it's, it's not really your father's capture anymore. Where we, we once began thinking of it as stuffing paper through a scanner and, and, and having an image appear on a screen. Today we're talking about a lot more innovative things that I suspect get mischaracterized by, by the general market as sort of AI-ish kinds of things. Um, but it opens a whole new door onto some very interesting pointed applications um, and I want to welcome um, someone I'm very proud to call a friend and colleague for many, many years, Bob Larravee uh, of Bob Larravee Consulting. Uh, many of you may know him through his long tenure at AIM. Uh, I've known Bob for several decades now, I'm ashamed to say, <laughs> Mr. Larravee. <laughs> but it's always a pleasure. One of the smartest people I know who dates his, his tenure in this general profession all the way back to Wang. That's how long we've been at it. Long time. <laughs> a long time. So welcome, Bob. Thank you very much for taking the time to chat with us today. And um, why don't you tell the kind folks in TV land what you were telling me about what, what you've, you've recently tripped over uh, in terms of sort of next, next gen capture. We're, we're searching for a phrase here. Yeah, and, and that's part of the problem. Um, I think you hit it right. It's not your father's capture because um, it isn't. And when you look at capture, what you described, the idea of shoving paper into scanners and everything, of course, how appropriate we're doing this today as the southern Florida counties are <laughs> restuffing their scanners, <laughs> trying to figure out which end is up. Um, and, and that's still part of the reality of capture is, you know, we still have those devices around. But capture goes well beyond that, and, and I think there's probably somewhere there's a better word for capture now. Um, I'm not quite sure what it is. I hope someday that, you know, all of a sudden it'll just kind of be there and go, this is it. Um, <laughs> but I haven't reached that point yet. Um, so when we think about capture, I mean, there's a couple different things. We're, we're capturing right now, you and I. You know, we're using this, these tools to record this session. And this is a form of capture. So we're recording video, we're recording audio um, with the purpose of making it a, a formalized record of our conversation, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, and then sharing it with the world, right? So this is one, one sense of capture. Uh, another sense is, is uh, we were just talking a few moments ago, I had the opportunity to record um, some music, being a bass player, uh, my alter ego, Steampunk Bob, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> worked with a good friend, Robbie Now, and we did a, a collaborative session uh, where Robbie laid down tracks uh, for guitar, vocals, and drums in his location and then file shared, and I was able to overlay the bass track uh, for what he did. And so we weren't anywhere near each other, uh, not in a studio. It was just, you know, here we are, two guys playing around on the internet um, using the Internet of Things, if you will, and, you know, the things happen to be instruments and all kinds of things. You know, we recorded this session, we captured the audio, and now he's got it out there. Uh, he just released it, as a matter of fact. And so, you know, that's a form of capture. But taking it even beyond that, looking, looking even further out, uh, is a couple of things that I've run across lately that have really caught my attention. Uh, one of which is Samsung has approved and, and will be distributing a new style of contact lens. Um, and these are not the contact lenses like you and I would normally use. You know, here's my glasses, right? Put in the contacts, right? Um, <laughs> and, and I can see clearer. This contact lens is actually got circuitry built into it. And it serves two purposes. One is as a display. And so there's a little mechanism that actually shoots the image into your eye. Uh, and it's, of course, the contact lens is attached to your eye. Uh, so all of a sudden, now you've got this display and, and you know, you're seeing things, but there's no screen, right? So it's, it's just there. It's projecting the image into your, into your retina. 
And then the second thing that it can do is actually serve as a camera. And so now with a um, set series of blinks or however it's trained to do it, you can actually capture, you can capture what you're looking at, right? Just by the blink of an eye. Um, so, you know, you see something that's important, you blink your eyes and now it's captured as an image. I think the next phase of that is actually going to be video. They, they haven't talked about it yet, but to me, it's just a logical extension that somewhere down the road, um, you'll be wearing these contact lenses and you'll actually be recording live video. Um, that, that I can imagine will um, take off like, like gangbusters. I mean, look at today's world where you've got people using their phones to capture video of all these different events, you know, car crashes, fires, whatever the case might be. Now you wouldn't even need your phone. <laughs> you just so have your contact. That's really interesting. It, it, that suggests there's like some sort of a, a Wi-Fi or cellular circuit imprinted or embedded within the contact. Yeah. You know, and it's like the, the mechanics, mechanics of this electronic thing are really intriguing to me. Like how do you charge it and, and mm -hmm. all that. You know, but it also reminds me years ago and and i have to say folks uh bob is instrumental in my sort of uh climbing aboard this whole video thing um when i was up and coming as a trainer um in in the content management you know the broad arena um i think you turned me on to the mit project sixth sense yes which is a long time ago now but it was the same idea rudimentary compared to what you just described but the idea of looking at something and going like this and it would take a picture mm -hmm. and one of the questions that it posed in my mind and, and still does is there's a record of this thing but it doesn't really exist so like even you know back then with that technology it was the ability to to project something onto a wall right and you would work with it or show somebody something and then you turn it off it goes away mm -hmm. so here you have this image in your eyeball how, how do we prove it existed well and from a capture standpoint if if you take the picture for example it will store it on your mobile device so your, your smartphone um, so I've got to dig a little bit deeper into it, how it works, like the whole charging aspect. I, I'm assuming, and, and I know that's not a good use to word, but I'm assuming that it works um, in similar fashion to some of the toll devices that we have here. There are no batteries to be replaced in, in the toll sensor for um, the express yeah. lanes, right? And that's so true. you go through and it records it. And what it is, is when it gets pinged, it becomes active somehow. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing that that's along the lines of what they're doing here. The, the other thing is, uh, because it, it does store it on your phone, now it can be used you know, at some point, upload it. Um, and I would imagine that it some, someday it would probably be a Wi-Fi enabled you know, to some degree that says, okay, you know, th th as we miniaturize technology, um, now this thing is also you know, connected to the internet somehow, and it's just storing it into a larger repository than your phone your uh, or your mobile device. Yeah, into your brain. Yeah. Well, if you if you <laughs> that gets into a whole other conversation <laughs> with you know, the the Ray Kurzweil situation with singularity, right? Yes. Where what is it by twenty forty eight? I think it is that he said we'll all have these little chips implanted in our in our brains, and That's we won't need any of this hardware. I'm sorry. There's an uproar in Great Britain right now that has implanted chips or identifiers mm -hmm. as an issue. I mean, it all sounds so futuristic, you know, but maybe it's true. The future is now. <laughs> well, it, yeah, I think it is. Um, you know, these, these contact lenses, they said, will probably be commercially available in a couple of years um, where you and I could just go out and, and buy these things. Of course, you know, from an ethical standpoint, <laughs> um, now you've got to sit there and say, okay, if you have this device, do you have to let people know that you're wearing it? Because uh, you might be taking their pictures. You know, and, there, was, and there was a movie, I want to say Gerard Butler, but now I can't remember. It was a bunch of years ago. 
it was based on a similar premise that the the center the central control he was a cop i guess in this mm-hmm. futuristic setting could see things through the eyes of people mm-hmm. that's how they would you know he basically didn't really need witnesses anymore and yeah. the bad guys could take control over the sensor and show you anything that they wanted, whether or not it was real. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was a pretty cool premise, and yet here you're describing what sounds like the be- the beginnings of that kind of technology. Um, you're right; it is a conversation for a different day, and 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 one actually we should probably have, and this might be a good forum for it: the ethics of such things. Mm-hmm. Um, you had also mentioned to me a second example that I think, while well, we just sort of hit on this sort of thing used for the forces of evil, <laughs> this more medically oriented one is really an example of for the forces of, of good. Why don't you, if you would, take a minute and, and, and describe that one. Yeah, the, the other one that I found um, is a combination of things. And I, actually, I just read this one this morning. I'm still digging into it a little bit more. Um, but basically... Microsoft has a product called HoloLens, as in holograms, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a company called OpenSight, and they've got what's referred to as augmented reality, as opposed to virtual reality, right? Virtual reality, your entire environment is out there, right? Right. It's all kind of made up. Yeah. Yeah, it's artificial. But augmented reality is a combination of um, a... I'm, I'm going to call it a virtual. It's not really virtual, but it's it's interactive with the real world. Like, and so, my favorite example, like like the 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 first down yellow stripe in a football game, it mm-hmm. doesn't really exist on the field, but it's there. But when you watch it on TV, it's really quite helpful. And the purple one or whatever color says, "Here's where the ball is." Yeah. As as and, for, yeah. And that's how this works. Is basically um, in healthcare, and and that's the example that that is using it because the FDA has approved this now for use, uh, that surgeons can wear the HoloLenses, the, the Microsoft glasses, right? And through OpenSight, uh, what they do is they'll have a patient, like let's say they're doing spinal surgery, right? You know, you have a herniated disc or something that they're gonna fix. And so what they do is they can have you lay down and using these glasses, they can actually see your spine, your ribs, and everything in 3D. And everything around you, of course, is the real room, right? So the augmented reality is they're imprinting, if you will, a display of your insides <laughs> on your back in this particular case because they're looking at your spine. And, and so the surgeon sees your spine um, and what it all looks like in real time. And it's just like you're laying on the table and they've kind of peeled away the skin and they're looking right. at you. And so the idea behind this is, in this particular application is that this would help the surgeons plan out the surgery much more precisely than they ever could before. And so they look and they say, oh, geez, well, um, I thought I was going to be able to do this based on x-rays and MRIs, but looking at it now, I see that there's this little complication over here um, or there's something over here that we're going to have to deal with as well. And so now we have to change the approach to something a little bit different. And so, you know, I look at these types of things and, and of course, this is a form of capture as well um, because now I'm, I'm looking at you, I'm looking at your real anatomy um, and I can actually record that and then look at it later. As I as I go through my planning stages, it sounds to me like it's it's just a step away, however however large that step technologically, but almost like X ray glasses. Mm-hmm. Well, it, the first thing I thought to look was at the comic it, books. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The old comic because books. Buy the X ray glasses. <laughs> you could just look at the patient lying on the table. Yeah. And, and essentially overlay this image on the actual body so that if, if, if it's not perfectly aligned that the guy is scooched a little sideways or what have you, mm-hmm. that, that would be reflected in what you're seeing to help navigate yeah. the path. You know, I find that fascinating. Um, the, the picture that they have in the article looks like the guy's laying under a fluoroscope, which would make sense because that would be live. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, and so, so apparently the software, and again, I'm, I just saw this this morning, but it really caught my attention because I love, you know, the use of technology for this type of right. reason. Um, but here you go, you're, you're sitting under the fluoroscope and they're not looking at a two dimensional screen. They're looking at 3d. And, and if you roll over, like you say, <laughs> you know, they're seeing all of the, the spinal spinal column, um, in reality. And so this is this is really cool stuff. Well, then I jump to things like phys security, physical security. Like, like, is there a way to apply that, or instead of an X-ray or whatever the frequency is, to to really know what's inside a shipping container, let's say, mm -hmm. or or even a package? You know, the 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 spate of nefarious goings on. You know, in the political arena with with the explosives being sent to prominent people mm -hmm. um you know not for me one of the takeaways of this is we've moved a, a long way from simply here's a piece of paper i need to scan the image right to and we were we were before we we came on the air here we were talking about what do you call it in, ingesting or intake of other kinds of information you know it, it's capture but does that work yeah. do with justice so you know, we're plenty of us are still dealing with this. Yes. Um, to a degree and, that and some not so much. <laughs> some yeah. not so much. <laughs> some not so much. <laughs> Yet when when you sort of look at it more well, what do you want to say? Take that step backwards a little bit and just sort of look at what's happening, suddenly it's it's a whole different notion of what capture is. Mm-hmm. And depending on where you are as an organization, how creative a thinker your place is, you know, what does the culture support, um, what kind of business are you in, all of a sudden you realize it's not just scanners. Mm -hmm. and you talked about your, your music example, that there's, the, there's a line now that's, that's being erased between capture and collaboration. Yes. I recently just posted that search really is becoming everything and everything is becoming search because the underlying technologies and techniques have advanced to the point where you're looking at a corpus of information, looking at metadata and, and other kinds of analytics even, mm -hmm. either just to find something or, or to do something with it or to preserve it, but, but the underlying technology is the same. Yes. And it becomes much more application-driven then technology driven once the technology reaches a point um and i guess perhaps maybe that's a place to, to wrap up it's just looking a do you agree with that shift and b if so i'm really bad at asking questions so i'll make it <laughs> i'll make it a statement with a question mark at the end for me if that is true that we're really at a point where the technology question is beginning to drop out of the equation a little bit. I mean, you still need the right tools. It still needs right. to work. I'm, I'm not suggesting it's not important, but the driver is much more the application. What are we going to use that technology for? I think that's a good thing because that's very much my old, what business problem you're trying to solve mantra mm -hmm. come to the fore. And what you described in terms of capture, I mean, I, I I get really excited about stuff like that because it's it's a real solution to a real problem. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and hey, it, does that make sense? It, it does, <laughs> and you know, taking it even a step further, um, where you you talk about the technology and the application of the technology, I look at it, at it even a little bit further out and saying. Uh, getting back to the business problem, you know, what is the business problem that, that you're trying to solve with this? Um, and then how do I apply that technology to that business scenario? Now, looking at some of these devices, I mean, in the case of the Microsoft HoloLens and, and OpenSight, I mean, they clearly had a goal in mind for this. But as you and I were just talking about, you know, extending this technology to other areas, you know, to be able to look into shipping containers or you know, as, as we were talking about it, I was picturing um, Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie Total Recall, where he's on the scanner going through the airport, and it shows his skeleton with a gun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and 
you know, theoretically that is possible with something like this now, right? Where, where you could do something like that. Um, but it, it is, is focusing on the business and focusing on the, on the business problem. How do you use this contact lens from a business standpoint? Uh, you could picture, you know, I, years and years ago, I piloted, test piloted, if you will, a pair of glasses, which eventually became Google glasses. Uh, but this was back in the 80s when yeah. Google didn't exist. And so these were glasses that basically were display. They were, they were heads up display. And some of the applications that they were talking about um, were in the military, right? Where they would yep. wear these things. There's a heads up display here. And this, this eye would be clear so they could see what was going on, line of sight, you know, that type of thing. Where now you've got this contact lens that can do this. So there goes the goggles, right? Don't need them anymore. Don't need the frames. I, think I had and one of those. Yeah. <laughs> I had a little, it was a little square thing. It was almost yeah. like a uh, a bicyclist's rearview mirror. Yeah, yeah, and it would shoot the picture into your eye. Well, now it's a contact lens, right? And, and Google, by the way, has been playing around with this concept. Um, from a display standpoint, my understanding is it's been limited to a display standpoint where Samsung took it to the other extreme and said, let's not just make it display, but also make it a camera. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's a, a, you know, to me, that's a logical and smart move. Oh, but, weld inspections or meat inspections or, or. Yeah, all kinds of things that you can do with it. Um, and then, you know, when we talk about beyond even this, uh, getting into simpler things in, in the term captured, this is where I think the word ingest almost fits, mm -hmm. but look at the utility companies you know you've got electric meters power meters gas meters um, all of these things now that are out there that are just sending data constantly sending data back on your usage there's no more meter man i mean the only time they send somebody out to check the meter is if you complain and you say hey i didn't use a hundred thousand gallons of water this month you know, something's got to be wrong right and then they send somebody out to check it but for the most part it sure. just sits there and, and sends data back. And so that, you know, that to me is where the ingest information, ingest data um, is there because it's constantly feeding. Right. You know? And so, again, we get to this thing, you know, is it capture? Is it ingestion? Is it is it something different? Um, someday, someday we'll figure it all out. But for today, I guess capture is still, you know, but like you said, um, it's not your dad's capture. It's not right. your father's capture anymore. Well, just got one eye on the clock here. I think we'll we'll wrap it there. Um, okay. But to be continued. It's always amazing to talk to you, Bob. Um, and and as is usually the case, we'll hit on some subjects that that raise more questions than they answer, at least in my mind. <laughs> um, but I love it, and and I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today. Um, looking out to you viewers if you've got thoughts questions uh please let us know um you can s send them through me steve at hollygroup.com i'll be sure that bob sees them uh undoubtedly we'll see you online because i know bob has a big presence there as well uh and until next time sir larravee thank you kindly oh thank you steve i appreciate it all right bye-bye everybody see you next time